we are going to have a short story anthology uh, coming up. I wanted to kick everything off with this panel on um, how to write a good short story because, um, you know, I wanted to give all the members uh, lots of time to think about their story and uh, write their stories um, for our, until for spring. So, um, first of all, let me introduce our panelists. We have Joseph Walker, S. Walker. Um, he has been in many, many short story anthologies, as well as Ashley Ruth Bernier, Holly West, we have here as well, and Simon Wood. They've also written a lot of short stories. They've been in anthologies. They've also been behind the scenes editing and um, putting them together as well. So, if we can start off um, by having you tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, your short story writing, and also, you know, whatever you're working on right now. Um, can we start with Joseph? Um, I've been writing and publishing short stories for 10 or 12 years now. Uh, after thinking of myself as a writer for 30 years and never actually writing anything, uh, at some point I decided, well, I suppose I should actually write something. So I have not yet written a novel or anything longer than a novelette. I consider myself a short story specialist in part because that's what I have time to do and in part because I just think it's fun. Uh, you write a short story. Next week, you could be working on a completely different short story. Whereas if you write a novel that's six, eight, 10, 12 months of your life on one thing, and I don't have that kind of focus. So that's me. And what about what's your where was your latest short story published? Uh, I was in, um, I've got a story in this terrific book, a uh, collection of crime stories inspired by one hit wonders. Uh, my story is Come on, Eileen, and I had a lot of fun writing it. So this is fresh off the presses. It just came out a couple of weeks ago. Great. Congratulations. And I'll also hold this up because Ashley Ruth is also in this book, a uh, collection of Stone's Throw stories. So another terrific Thanks. little collection. And Holly? Um I forgot to, my books are on the shelf over there, but I forgot to get them, of course. I always do. Um, I am the author of two historical mystery novels um, and then numerous short stories. I've been writing short stories since probably 2014. And I'm um, also the editor of Murder Go-Go's, music inspired by the music of the Go-Go's. And then recently I did last year's Basha Khan anthology, which was called Killing Time in uh, San Diego. So that's that's a very condensed version. Of, oh, and I'm working on a novel set in uh, Venice Beach, California right now. Ashley, thanks for having me here. I'm Ashley Ruth Bernier. I am, um, you know, it's hard to think of myself as a writer, even though I have loved to write ever since I was a child. Um, I'm a first grade teacher. I, I'm originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands, from St. Thomas, but I live in uh, North Carolina now. And about two and a half years ago, I decided I was going to buckle down and and get really serious about writing. It was harder to do when the kids were little, but now that they were a little older and more independent, um, play video games while well, I wrote something short. And so writing short fiction has been um, so much fun. I've had a lot of fun digging into um, shorter, punchier works. And um, thankfully, I have experienced some success over the past couple of years. Um, I've had some short stories in Ellery Queen and um, a couple of other places. And, um, most recently, there's a story in um, a weather-themed anthology called Ill Winds and Wild Weather. Um, and so that just came out as an ebook and should be available as a paperback soon. And um, so that was my most recent uh, publication. How about you, Simon? Um, actually, I just was just thinking about it as I was speaking. Um, my very first short story was 24 years ago this month, published. Um, I, I use short stories as my apprenticeship for writing. I just wrote lots and lots of short stories um, because I could be more experimental. I could do different things with it. Um, uh, and that helped me, I think, with novel writing. Um, it helped me to to be to understand compression, um, how to tell a story tightly. Um, and so, yeah, I still write short stories. They're still very... It's a good discipline to have because it helps you in all aspects of your writing. And I think the last short story I had 
came out in Black Cat Weekly um, about, I think, just before Christmas. Great. Congratulations. Uh, you, and you're also working on something that's nonfiction, right? Yeah, I'm working on um, um, a book on suspense. I can't tell you when it's coming out, though. <laughs> but how to write this, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, why don't we start with the big question? What makes a good short story? Uh, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's the, 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 especially if you're doing crime fiction, there's an expectation with it, but you do need to have, you know, a crime or something happening in the beginning that involves an investigation that leads to a resolution. I don't think you can have a mood piece or a, a slice of life story um, and say that's a short story. You know, in some respects, it's just an anecdote. But but I think if you're doing genre fiction, especially crime or mystery, you're going to have to um, condense a mystery, and that means having a beginning, middle, and end. I found when I was editing uh, Killing Time in San Diego, which is a blind submissions, and it's the first time I'd ever edited something with um, blind submissions. So many of the stories started out really strong, but then kind of fizzled out at the end. And so that's like the number one the thing that I always say. It's like, you know, nail your beginning, nail your end. Definitely, you know, you need a middle as well. But those two bookends, if you will, um, are super important because the first thing that I see is going to to kind of grab my attention and get me through, you know, to go further. And the last thing is what I'm going to remember as an editor who is trying to figure out which stories to accept. Um, for me, as a reader, I really enjoy stories that feel connected throughout. Meaning that, especially with a with a crime fiction. Um, short story, there are clues, there are evidence, there's evidence that eventually leads to some kind of resolution. And then having those little connections pull together um, in a big way at the end of the story um, that makes the reader say, oh, or oh my goodness, um, that's what really makes a story feel successful to me and what I try to go for when I write. But those are the stories that I enjoy most, the ones that have those threads the themes, the callbacks that kind of pull everything together and make it feel like a cohesive piece. Uh, I'd agree with pretty much everything that's been said. I would add incision, uh, which is kind of the flip side of what Ashley was talking about. For me, the, the fun of writing short stories, um, the part I really enjoy isn't even so much the drafting as the editing it myself or reading it myself. It, pardon me. And seeing how many words can I cut? How much of this needs to be here? Because to me, that's what ultimately makes a good short story is every single thing belongs in this story. Everything contributes something. To the, and like I said, I have a short story mind. I often find myself reading novels thinking, do I need to know what this guy had for lunch? Uh, but with short stories, it's clean. It cuts right to the ball. And they've, and, you know, that's just me. I always say, in when, if I'm teaching a class on short stories, I said, would you pay a dollar for that word? <laughs> and there's a thing like, if your story's 5,000 words, are you willing to put five grand on the table for that short story? And it's like, it's amazing how many words people will save. <laughs> I find it's easy to cut, like, little words here and there. You'd be surprised how much that adds up to that you can use for something else or just not have. I just think we. Oh, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I was going to say one of the things with, with short stories is just the fact that you um, you don't have to explain everything. Sure. You can you can leave something to the imagination. And let the reader do some of the heavy lifting. Is so it's that thing of like I don't need a big info dump. I don't need an origin story. You can just show with some um, with a simple action that will make you think. Oh, I think I know what this guy's about. It doesn't matter if the reader sees it differently to the you did as the writer but it's the fact of like leave something for them to do some um you know use their imagination right 
I find a really effective way of cutting words is reading your work aloud. And even in having in mind, so I, I kind of honed this with writing flash fiction, which usually is a thousand words or less, sometimes as low as 500 words. Um, but you write the story as it comes to you, but then knowing you have to condense it into that 700 words, you edit you know, to tighten it as much as possible. And when you read it aloud, and this is something I learned from uh, readings at Noah at the Bar, when you read your work aloud, you you suddenly are noticing things that don't flow smoothly uh, and, and you figure, oh, I can cut that or I can condense, like even contractions, you know, um, things like that. Um, I find that reading aloud is a really good way to to figure out. I have, I have it read to me. Good. That that really does expose, you know, where dialogue is too lengthy. Because you're like, going, oh, did I really write that? I find the read out of this part, so I can see how that would be effective too. Yeah, um, I use the read aloud function in Word. I I love that. That helps me a ton. Um, so what about the twist? How important is it to have a twist in a short story? <laughs> Simon, why don't you would you address that first? Go ahead. Um, I don't think it always has to um, end on the sort of like um, big to da kind of moment sort of thing. I don't think that is um, essential. If your story builds to a certain uh, conclusion, um, then you don't necessarily need the twist. If you are sort of like look, try to do the magician thing, that everything's a distraction Art. and you want to make them um, believe a certain thing. And part of, part of the short story or it's a story is you're trying to manipulate the audience. And with a twist, you need to manipulate them right and make them look over here. And then you're going to hit them with the last paragraph from the other direction. As long as you're not doing the thing of like pulling something out of nowhere, that all the clues and the information was there. It was just the fact that um, you've led the reader down a certain path and then you're just going to jump out and surprise them at the end. I don't think it's, it's essential. You know, I've done stories that all end on a punchline, whereas other ones I've, I've not had to do that because it's just the shape of the story. Yeah, for me, um, I love a story with a twist at the ending. I do not think that I am very good at writing stories with a twist. But for me, as long as that ending, even if it's a lot of twist, if it's something that causes the reader to come to a new understanding, if it's moved, if your character has somehow been moved from who they were at the beginning to the end, if there's something that surprises your reader that isn't necessarily a twist, but just a connection that's been made, if there's like some kind of emotional impact at the end, um, that's a successful ending. Um, in my opinion, with or without a, a true twist, per se. Yeah, yeah. Say a little. I will say that, yeah, I, I, I don't think in terms of twists. Okay. Uh, I don't think in terms of twists at all. And I'm sure some of my stories have things that could be called twists, but that's not what I'm setting out to do. I, I start out thinking in terms of a character or a scene and then basically I write the rest of the story uh, to give that character or scene a world to exist in. You know, how did this come about? Um, so I don't think thinking I'm going to put a twist in this story as you approach it is necessarily helpful. But that's just me. Did that just kind of come naturally sometimes? Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, so did the twist just kind of come naturally then sometimes? Just like later on as you... I suppose if you happen to think of one, but if I looked at a list of my stories and was asked which of these stories have twists, I wouldn't know how to answer the question. Okay. How about you, Holly? I, know, I was just going to say, I definitely don't think it's necessary. When they're done well, they're fantastic. But don't just try to stick one in for the sake of sticking one in because it's, you know, your other your story has other things that it can, that are... It, it, it's not the only part of, of plotting and that sort of thing. So that's, I don't really have an opinion about it, but um, just make sure if you do it, do it well. 
Okay. Um, so there are all kinds of short stories. They vary from flash, flash fiction, as Holly mentioned, um, which are usually under 1,500 words, to novellas, which are about 10,000 words. Um, a lot of anthologies stick to about 5,000 words, which ours will. Um, so that's not a lot of words to kind of cram everything in. I was wondering if you have any tips on how to keep it short and still have, like you said, that good beginning, middle, and end. Um, why don't we start with you today, Joseph, or right now, Joseph? Um, I find it helpful. I think the big step for me when I kind of became better at writing was realizing just how essential revision is to the process because it's liberating. If you, once you realize or once you have the attitude that revision is where the real writing happens, it kind of frees you to just throw anything you want on the page with the knowledge that, you know, you'll be going back later to cut, 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 cut. Um, but in terms of keeping to a word limit, I think you develop a sense over time of, you know, 4,000 words allows me to have about this much in terms of characters and scenes and um it's it's a matter of practice and experience and reading if you're going to write short stories that's the first thing you should be doing is reading short stories and getting a sense of how much is happening here don't think too much about especially if you don't have a lot of experience don't think too much about word count Work on getting the words out. And if and this, that's especially if you're not plotting in advance. And I don't tend to plot my short stories, um, although I did write a novella that I plotted very uh, loosely on the, like, the Save the Cat um, story beats. And that worked out really well for that. Um, I just condensed because, you know, there's, I forget how many beats there are, too many for uh, even in a novella in, in this case. And, but, you know, you find ways to condense for lack of a better word, smushing some of the beats together into one scene or, or something like that. But yeah, don't don't worry too much about the word count while you're writing, especially first draft. Get get your story down. And a lot of things you're going to just because Ashley had mentioned the theme. I feel like themes are really important in stories um, and um, it, it, it can make them more memorable. Definitely any story. And um Sometimes you won't have your theme until you start until you write the story. So give yourself some freedom. Give yourself some, you know, don't worry about it too much. And then, like he said, uh, revising is when you you really start cutting it down. Yeah, I feel like I am learning from the three of you also because I tend to be very worky um, with my short stories. They tend to all be like novelette territory. And so um, learning how to cut is, is um, like learning from the three of you guys who are masters. Um, word counts are, are very difficult for me, um, but when I, I, I struggle with them, um, and when I submit to an anthology that has um, you know, a specific word limit, um, I do fall back on some of the advice that, that Joseph mentioned. Um, Oof being familiar with how much room that gives you to spread out with the story, how much character development can go into this. Where does the story begin? Um, do I, you know, with, with a shorter word count, I need to begin closer to the big action of the story instead of easing into it. Um, and then just, again, being very clear once you get to the end, if there's a theme, if there's like a certain idea that you want to impart, making sure that those themes, those threads are sprinkled throughout the story. And if it means that those things are, are included in the story, it means getting rid of anything extraneous um, that, you know, might be taking up space in the story. So that, uh, that has always helped me when I'm um, working on something that has a specific word count. And I will say that everything I turn in with a word limit is like, 15 words shy of it. <laughs> it really is like 8,000 words. Like here's something that's 7,000, you know, 985. Um, it's, it's, uh, but, but yeah. Um, 
the advice given by the others is is really great advice for trying to to shorten and cut. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what I was going to say in response to you, and I'm looking at this as a panelist, I'm kind of looking at it more as an editor than I am as a short story writer. But because most recently is what I uh, I did the editing and I haven't written a short story in, since then. But I was going to say, consider going shorter, not too short. I'd say 3,000 words if, you know, if it's a 5,000 word. And the only reason I say that is because most of the stories submitted are going to be around 5,000 words. And as an editor, you're not, yes, you're picking the best stories, but you also have the entire book, entire anthologies to look at. And the rhythm of your table of contents is important. And if I got two or three stories that were, you know, kind of the same theme, same setting, this or that, um, you know, I'd figure out which one is the best of those because I, even if all three of them were just like top notch stories, I had to figure out like, well, no, this is too much of this particular topic. And so um, I've gone off. We, that's something to think of as well, but you don't know what other people are writing about. But when I'm doing my table of contents, if every word, if, if every story is 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, I like to intersperse some shorter ones in there. Yeah, I, I call it a rhythm of my table of contents. Um, and so don't be afraid to go shorter. There's also a, there's a practical advantage to that too, because having talked to editors about this in the past, there are going to come up situations where the editor is like, well, I have room for another 3,000 word story, but I don't have room for a 4,000 word story. Mm -hmm. So here are two equally good stories. I'm going to take the shorter one. And you're right that you can't, predict entirely what other people are going to do. But like, for example, uh, I'm in an anthology coming out later this year from another sync chapter where the, the theme of the anthology was sports. And I went into it thinking they're going to get a ton of baseball stories. They're going to get a ton of football stories. They're going to get basketball stories. I wrote about ice skating. Uh, I don't know anything about ice skating, but I found out enough to write about ice skating. And I'm, you know, Give the editor uh, every opportunity to say, this is something I don't have already in the book. Yeah, I would, I would also say the other thing to remember is if you hyphenate a word, word counts as one word. So hyphenate, hyphenate, hyphenate. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I, I must admit, one of my early things when I was writing, I just didn't care about what it was. I just wrote and wrote. And I think one of my first short stories... 15,000 words and then realized no one wants a 15,000 word short story. So I cut 10,000 words and I don't think I lost anything. It was hard work and it took a, it took a long time to just slash and burn so much stuff. But in the end, I still told the same story in a third of the real estate. And, uh, it was better. It was a better story because of it. I think because I, I did the thing, it was like there was a massive long lead in that you didn't really need. So you're like, going, well, there's six pages gone. Um, and that's one of the things that I would recommend. One thing I did want to pick up, that I, would, I did want to make the point on, was on word count, um, I was going to recommend that people do try and write 3,000 word stories because of what um, Joseph and Holly said, is that editors will want something, and especially on certain magazines, especially if you're a new author, who doesn't have a ton of credits, they're more likely to take a flyer on a short story with someone new than they are with someone who's established who's going to write an 8,000 word story for them. Um, so, I, you know, I do think short stories can be your friend, not always write into whatever the upper limit Probably. of the yeah. um, submission guides are, because sometimes it will, you know, it's your friend to come in something, to sneak something in that's a little smaller. Um, but yeah, the only thing that I would add to that is um, if you take the, your, your short story is only going to be about 20 pages long, um, is that thing of like, oh, it, you always want to start a story about 10 seconds before something happens. I don't need to know their life story. It's literally, they're going to walk out that door behind me 
and they're going to walk into the crisis of the story, whatever it is. That's why it's always nice to write procedurals or PI stories, because it's always going to start with the client walking through the door. And that's when they're going to be given the assignment. So that's that thing of like procedurals and PI stories somewhat have a um, an easier time getting to the point because they have to have the crime or the client or something to kick things off. So Mike, I don't say this is what you always have to do, but by the end of page one, hopefully you should establish what this story is about. It, if it, about the character and you know their relationships and who the other characters are, those can be fed in as the story develops. But by the end of page one, I should know where this story is going. Yep. Just as a rough guide. What about... I don't- the number of characters and setting, because I know that, Simon, you've talked a little bit about this in terms of short stories and, uh, and, and maybe not setting, but like, um, you, you don't want it to be in lots of different places, right? Yeah. I, the only thing I would say is I was thinking, tell people to think in terms of a stage play, because it's a short story. You can only get a certain number of people on that stage and the number of locations is limited because I think like Joseph said, I kind of, I've built a rhythm that a scene for me in a short story is around 500 words, give or take, depending on the style of the story, whether it's a flat story or something that's longer. But you don't want it to be um, something with a cast of thousands. It's not like Ben-Hur and it's 12 pages long. Um, and I used to judge for um, Writer's Digest years ago. And one guy wrote like a... Um, like an apocalyptic story submission. And it, we had, it was set in like eight different countries. We had 30 something characters and um, it was two and a half thousand words long. It was more like an outline for a novel than it was a short story. Um, but it was a thing of like, no, if this is that thing. If you're writing a novel, you can have that. You can have this cast of char- uh, different POVs and, and locations and everything else. You write in short, you write about one person and how it's affecting them. You can have, uh, you know, you could, if it's a zombie story, for example, you can show like how the zombie horde is, is dismantling the world. But if you're going to do a short story, you do it about a school teacher or trying to lock up a school when they turn up. And that, that's the key difference. So when you try, it's the landscape you get given on a short story opposed to what you can do in a novel. So I always think, you know, try and think in stage play terms. That's really helpful. Um, so what are some of your short story pet peeves? Something that would make you say, no, I don't think, I don't think that works. Um, Holly, please start with you. That's good. <laughs> I don't like I don't like cliches very much. I don't like um subtle uh, usually people aren't writing about misogyny but you know I don't like subtle misogyny. These days I'm pretty careful too about you know um take it out a bit of left hand. You like it? the topics like I you know, it's hard to navigate as a writer these days because there's a lot of stuff. You're afraid of making a mistake or offending someone. That's what you can. But I tend to be very, um, this is something that I think about when I'm reading stories. Um, so I would call that a pet peeve, but it's something something to think about when you submit a story. You don't know what your editor's sensibilities are. <laughs> and um, usually in the guidelines, it'll make clear what they don't want. Um, but just give it a thought. And I know there's, you know, a lot of people have different thoughts about that. They want to write what they want to write, but, um, you know, you you might not get published because of it. I think that's a really good point. That's something I think, um, our previous anthology, there was an issue with that, um, from what I understand. So I think, and I think that's good advice for people to think about, okay, yeah, you can write whatever you want to write, but you know, you need to think about what other people are going to want to read. Um, Ashley, how about you? What, do you have any pet peeves, something that you think, or, or maybe something that's happened to you, like you got rejected because you did a certain thing? Well, not really. I'm not sure. So I know that as as a reader, I'm going to go out on, on like my own limb here. And I know that, 
the other panelists might not agree. Um, I personally prefer a story that has a lot more like meat to it and like emotional heft. So that's what I try to write. And I guess that's why they're longer. But I don't particularly enjoy a story where um, where the prose is more spare and where I don't feel connected to the character. Because ultimately for me, if it if it's not a bad character that I want to spend time with, then I don't necessarily want to control me reading, even if it's short. So I prefer it like I ever since I was a little kid, like I don't enjoy stories where I only know the main character's last name. I and that's just me personally again. Um so I I prefer a story that has that emotional impact and that emotional connection. Um and so that's what I look for when when I read. And so uh, pet peeve is when there's less of that in the story. But again, personal preference. So No, and I don't want you to think like because you've had a lot of success with your stories. So clearly you're doing something right. <laughs> so like the idea that, you know, the fact that you go along, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's this is just something I throw out there to keep in mind. Right. Uh, you know, with the editing process, you're juggling a lot of balls. And 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 so that's why I threw it out there. But you're doing no, I totally understand. I totally understand. <laughs> I guess just to keep in mind that there again, going back to what we were just saying, like there are many different kinds of readers. Like I know that the stories I write might not be everybody's cup of tea because they want something shorter. Let's bring your get to the point. Um, but you know, it's uh, for some people they would prefer a little bit more time for some people they might prefer something that's punchier right and punch so and i think you can combine those things i mean i certainly have stories that have kind of lusher uh descriptives or narrative passages interspersed with very tight dialogue scenes that uh you know where you go through it 15 times saying can i cut this said can i cut this said Yes, I usually the answer to that question is yes. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a matter of personal style to a certain extent, but there should also be, I think, even within a short story, as short as it is, there's there's room for variety and rhythm, uh, longer sentences and then shorter sentences and action interspersed with reflection. Um, yeah, I'll, moving on. Yeah, I just, I just think you can, I think you can, there's always going to be an emotional component, whether you're brief or uh, more descriptive. I think, you know, there's that thing of baby shoes is still one of the best um, short stories, but it's only six words long um, because it, it gives you such an emotional punch that if it was longer, you would lose it, which is the Ernest Hemingway story if nobody's read it. Right. Um, um, for me, as an, editor the one thing that i i've had and i and i kind of think well don't do it is annotation that i've had with submissions where someone's put a note sort of like side note when i'm talking about this i mean this and it's like well that should be in the narrative not that you have to put annotations throughout the story telling me what i should understand what i should believe and I've, I've had that, whereas, because it might be a complex subject or um, the people aren't aware of. So it's just that thing of like, you just need to rewrite the story and get it in terms that a light person will understand, not the feel that you're going to have to put little sidebars throughout the story explaining what something means. Um, and again, as an editor, I would just say, um, submission, uh, you, do, you submit it in a submission format is that if you don't know what um, submission format is for a manuscript, manuscript formatting, um, Google it, find out what it is. Because I think certainly since we've gone away from paper copies, paper submissions for all the old people in the room, um, now everything's kind of submitted email. I think people have kind of forgotten that you need to um, double space, indent, what sort of... Um, uh, font they want. Why things that I tend to get is old fonts, different size fonts. Um, 
some of it will be all single space, some of it will be double space, space between paragraphs. It's like, I shouldn't have to format your work when I get it. It's like, you should format that work for me. And it's okay because I'm sort of like fairly, I don't edit on a regular basis, but if you're submitting to a magazine, the quickest way to get your submission round filed is if you've not read the submission guidelines or if you've not formatted your manuscript to what they expect, to a standard they expect. They expect you to be a professional, not that they're going to have to pick up your pieces and do it for you. You have to go in and go in with your best effort. And the other thing is make sure you're sending the best um, edit of your story. There is no final draft. Well, there will always be room to edit, yes. but the, the the submission you're sending is the best effort that you think you've done. Not that it's like, I've done this, it's pretty good, but hopefully you'll find some things for me. Thanks. It, it's not going to work that way. I, I just w- oh, Go ahead. I just want to kind of underline that because I, I talk to a lot of editors, I'm friends with a lot of editors, and yeah, any magazine, any anthology, there are going to be guidelines out there and not following the guidelines happens all the time. I'm sure the editors in the room can attest. And it really decreases your chances of getting in. And not only that, you don't think of this as this is my short story. Think of this as this is a short story of one of many that I want to write. and. Getting on an editor's bad side, getting getting to where the editor sees your name in the inbox and goes, oh, you, you don't want to do that. You want to be the person that the editor knows has followed the format. Will be you'll be open to edits. You'll be uh, if they need a story in a week, you can write them a story in a week. You want to be that person. Good pointer. Uh, kind of along those lines, I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about um, what writers can expect once their submission is accepted. Um, how much back and forth is there with the um, with the editors? Are we talking little tweaks, big changes? Um, I would say that I have only uh, when, when my stories have been accepted, um, I've had some editors reach back to me with like. <laughs> small changes that they make. I will say that I've been very fortunate. Um, I intersperse a lot of dialect. Uh, well, all of my stories take place in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, which is where I'm from. My characters speak authentically. Um, and I have been very fortunate in that many of the editors have allowed the characters <laughs> to, to have that dialect on the page. Um, but they're They've usually gotten back to me with little tweaks. You, you know, the sentence is a little confusing. Do you accept the edits? Usually they're very minimal. And um, once I've accepted those edits or we've gone back and forth a couple of times and it goes ahead to publication. That's been going. Yeah, yeah, mine too. It's going to vary widely from editors. Some editors will go through it line by line and make a lot of suggestions. Uh, Other editors... Stories I've had in Ellery Queen, for example, the only edit they ever asked for was to say, um, we don't use the F word, so could you make another suggestion here? But I, I think it's important to say you don't want to go into it with an attitude of every comma I have written is sacred and must not be touched. But you also don't necessarily need to feel like I'm just going to go through this and accept every change. If there's something you feel strongly about, Go back and forth with it. Talk about, well, here's what I think. And, you know, uh, editors are open to that. Yep. Yeah, I think. I'm glad to me. I was say, I, I think I've had sort of similar experience of just, it's usually fairly minimal because I still take the attitude of like, I'm going to s- send them the best manuscript I can to limit the number of edits that they have to think about. And like you said, they usually are just small things. It's usually, uh, um, minor grammar stuff or um how they want to um you know taking out commas adding commas that sort of thing depending on whether they love the oxford comma or hate the oxford comma and all this sort of stuff um 
similar to Ashley, if I'm doing a story that's set in the UK, it's the language is different. And so I will have to have those conversations about, um, it, I, I don't want to Americanize it too much or whatever it is. And it's that thing of like, but I do need to make it clear that if you don't know what these colloquialisms mean, that you should be able to read between the lines and still, and still get the story. So there are like some battles that you will fight, like Joseph says, um, but they're the ones that you, you know, are important rather than, you know, my stuff is sacred. You can't touch it. Take it or leave it um, because they'll leave it. Awesome. Uh, yeah. 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 And it's, it's usually stuff like that. I don't, I, you know, I, it'd be very rare that I've known anybody who's had an editor to take a short story and come back with it with like a real heavy development request of like going, Hey, let's change location. Let's get rid of these characters. Let's do a heavy rewrite, lose a thousand words. You, you're not going to get that. Well, when I edited Murder and Dogos, that was not blind submissions. It was I invited all of the authors to do it. And there were at least two stories that I had to do a really major developmental edit on. Um, and they were fine with it. I Basically, I helped them shape the story into what, you know, its full potential or as much potential as we could give it. And I'm really happy uh, with both of the stories, the way that they came out. But it was definitely a collaboration with the authors. But with Blind Submissions, which is what the uh, Sisters in Crime anthology will be, it's, it's different because I had, with the Bashakan anthology, I had such a limited amount of space and so many submissions that really only the top-notch stories got through. And... That meant I didn't have a lot. I didn't have any developmental editing to do. There were a few tweaks here and there. Um, but yeah, so it kind of depends, but it definitely, um, Simon already said it, submit the best story that you can. And also don't take it personally if you get rejected. Because I was so thankful for every single submission I got, even if I couldn't accept it. I just had so much gratitude for the writers who submitted because I've been on the other side of it. And um, I just know that that we're not there trying to hurt your feelings. <laughs> no, I, I, this is one of the things I suppose I, I forgot that I wanted to mention was rejection is your friend in some respects. I remember it's, it's very hard at the beginning. I remember every every rejection is is personal. All 650 of them behind me in a folder that I've kept. I know the names of the people who didn't want my stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But there is that thing. I do remember getting really angry with, with a, an early rejection and just stamping around the room um, and saying, you know, because the, the comment back was, because nine times out of ten, you're going to get a, a rejection that just says, no thanks. But if you get a no thanks with comments, is listen to the comments. Even if you disagree with them, still listen to them. Um, I just remember the, the editor saying, this is cliche, blah, 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 whatever. And I went, I'll show you. And I actually went and tore that story apart. Um, ended up starting with the ending and completely restructured the whole thing. And then I didn't send it back to her because obviously she'd rejected it. But I did get it accepted somewhere shortly after. And that story's been published like five different times. So, you know, re you know rejection may piss you off and, and sting a bit. But it, your rejections will make you a stronger writer. Good point. And I would ask, they, one of the stories that I rejected for um, Killing Time in San Diego, it ended up getting submitted to Ellery Queen. This was after I found out, like after the process was done and I found out who the writer was. Um, it, 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 he, he submitted it to Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine and it got accepted. So, and which is, you know, a, a higher paying market um, and, and one of his dreams. So just because one editor rejects it for an anthology doesn't mean that the story doesn't have merit. Absolutely. I, absolutely, I will say uh, I have the deep and unbelievable honor of having a single Edgar nomination for Best Short Story. And it was for a story that was rejected from four markets before Alfred Hitchcock accepted it. So 
One editor is maybe having a bad day. Maybe they just bought a story that has a similar plot twist, so they can't take this. If you believe in the story, there you will find a place for it. I've twice sold. Joseph, I just wanted to ask, did you do any rewrites on it before you submitted to Albert Hitchcock? Yeah, nope. awesome. I liked the story the way it was. Yeah. I was just going to say, I sold a novel, two novels to two different editors who'd rejected them in the past. Cool. So, so it just illustrates that thing of like, you don't know what day you're catching them on. Yeah. Right. It just so happened. They read? They had read and rejected. Yeah. And then I sold them to them later. It was mainly because I was doing um, both occurrences were uh, face-to-face pitches and you didn't know who you were pitching to. And you're walking in with that book under your arm and then you're going, oh, crap, this guy's already rejected it. And I just thought, well, I'll just, I won't turn around and just leave. I'll just front it out and just see if I, if I sell them the story with my personality and my face, maybe they can't re- reject it this time. But it just shows, you know, an editor's not going to be the same person two days in a row. Yeah, the market changes. Um, people are looking for changes. I can honestly say that except for, like, in, in most of the cases, the stories that have gotten placed have been rejected from at least one call. <laughs> the one that's in Stone's Throw with Joseph's story that he held up earlier, that one um, was written for like a local contest. I'd encourage my students to to uh, submit something and I'm, I decided to put something in there too. Two of my students won. I did not, <laughs> and um, you know, it, it went on to to get accepted somewhere else. And so, um, I can think of that with several of the stories. It's just, yeah, it's just hit or miss, depending on, like you guys said. <laughs> so, um, what are some other markets or publications for writers to submit their short stories to, other than the Capital Crimes Twenty Twenty Four anthology? Well, let me, uh, I'll jump in and, oh, uh, Ashley, if you want to go. Oh, no, go right ahead. Uh, I'm part of the Short Mystery Fiction Society, uh, which is a free, I'll emphasize free, uh, online group of short story writers, including many of the top writers working today, I think. And one of the things I do for the Short Mystery Fiction Society uh and I keep saying the full name so that everybody can Google it, Short Mystery Fiction Society, is maintain a markets list with as many markets as I can find, magazines, anthologies that take crime or mystery fiction. So that's one of the benefits of membership. So come on, he did, join. He does an excellent job of maintaining the list. Um, and I will also say that um, as a, you know, just jumping into this like a couple of years ago, I will say that there are a few organizations that have that I really felt have really been so beneficial to me as a short story writer. Um, the Short Mystery Fiction Society is one of them. It is just a really wonderful and supportive group. Of course, you get into any group what you get out of any group what you put into it. So, like if you if you choose to engage, right. if you choose to ask questions, if you choose to learn from people, um, there are plenty of really accomplished, knowledgeable people that are willing to help. And so, um, you know, it's, that's a great um, organization to be a part of. But if you're a member of any other mystery writing organization, um, Sisters in Crime, of course, like the Guppies, um, I am a member of Crime Writers of Color. Those are all organizations where people chime in with um, sharing calls and and mentioning, hey, have you heard of this one? Or, hey, I just heard that, you know, this chapter is putting out an anthology. Sometimes the chapters will, you know, mention um, an anthology that they are working on. Or editors might jump in and post a, um, a project that they're working on. So the more groups that you're a part of um, and you know, choose to engage with, the more you'll be in some of different markets. Yep. Um, I would also say uh, think outside the the usual boxes. Um, because there might be something that will be, you'll be looking for crime fiction or whatever it is, but there's a thing of just, just Google stuff. Like if you're in California, Google California, because there may be something that's a regional story Mm -hmm. that'll be based on setting 
or if it's if it's about a certain industry, then be an industry magazine that might do publications. So there's that thing of just you know Google, you know, use keywords, submission guidelines, story, and then whatever keyword there is. Um, I've had my short stories published on coffee cans in the past because there was a coffee company that published a short story with every can of coffee and they published it with every um, short run bean thing. So there was a new story every week from their sort of thing. So I used to submit um, short stories and things to them and I got published a bunch of times with them and they don't publish um, mystery magazine rates. They publish something a lot higher. And so it was that thing of like, don't don't think of, you know, don't get stuck in thinking that it's got to be um, a mystery magazine is the only location for your story or whatever genre you write in. Uh, just spend an evening in front of the TV Googling using keywords and you'll find something that you wouldn't have expected in there. I think like last year, someone wanted true life ghost stories and I had one. And I sent it in, and I I won the competition, and and um, got published, and got a check, and it was something that was just purely something I came across by chance, and it you know it's never going to be a regular um, publishing source. It was just a one time thing that somebody was doing. Um, so yeah, just I, it's just that thing of like just Google now and again, once a week. But don't fall into any rabbit holes of like sometimes Google can take you all these different places and you waste time. Yeah, but that's just that's where it's, that's where your next short story comes from. <laughs> I don't have any suggestions. These these the the ones that um these my fellow panelists have done. Uh Joseph especially. I think he probably uh that that I have not Funny enough, I've been doing this so long, I have never joined the small, uh, the mystery fiction. I've been asked. I need to do it. Now I know. It's great. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Great. Um, so thank you so much for um, participating today. I really, really appreciate you um, with offering all this great information and helping us kick off our anthology effort. Um, we'll get to our Q&A in a minute, but I wanted to make a quick announcement first about our anthology. Um, so Sacramento isn't just the capital of this beautiful golden state of California. We're also America's farm to fork capital because we live in one of the richest agricultural areas in the country. So much so that the New York Times recognized Sacramento as a great restaurant city because of all the chefs we use locally grown, locally sourced ingredients in their restaurants. So it's only fitting that the theme for our 2024 Capital Crimes Anthology will be farm to foul play. I'm so excited about this theme. I feel so on it. So, <laughs> you know, to our secretary, Jessica Klein, for coming up with this idea. And Jessica, if you're here, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there's so much you can do with it. Everything from a murderous dispute over water rights, Jim and Capote did it, to the celebrity chef who gets kicked off the Tower Bridge right before the big farm before dinner. So I can't wait to see what all of you guys have to offer. We wanted to do this early on so that you guys have lots of time to think about your story and write your story. We uh, Right now, I, we're thinking that we'll open up to submissions in April with a deadline uh, of um, the end of May. We want to now theme early so you have some time to think about it. Um, the rules are going to be pretty simple. You have to be a Capital Crimes member. Um, that means you also have to be a member of the National Sync. And um, the story will have to address the theme. And it has to be set in Sacramento or if you have to, Northern California is acceptable as well. Um, we'll have more details when we open to submissions in April. Uh, so keep checking our website. Thank you so much, um, Claire. Well, Jennifer, I just want to say really quickly uh, with regards to submissions, um, it will definitely say this in the uh, submission guidelines, but make sure that on your manuscript, there's nothing at all that identifies you. And the reason I say this, because there were two stories that were great stories. They were contenders and they slipped through 
the the person who like basically your story is going to come to one email box and someone in this case it's going to be me i'm going to remove all your identifying information so that it can be a blind submission well one person had uh put in their in the track changes it had their name on it so it identified them and the person who took the the information off didn't catch that and so i had to reject the story for what's no fault of the 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 person who submitted it. The second one left his bio at the bottom. And I couldn't it was a great story, Ed, but I couldn't and I knew the person, so I couldn't take it. I wouldn't have taken it anyway, because it, it was identified, but yeah. So just make sure that you take off all identifying information except for what they say in the submit mission guidelines. Right. Right. Thank you so much, Holly. Okay, go for the end. Um, people have been asking lots of questions in the chat. So um, we're going to go ahead and start the Q&A. Okay. Oh, the first, can, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the first question we had was, is there an optimal number of characters and plots in a short story? Min, max, and why? 3.7. <laughs> I, I think, like Simon said, you know, thinking in terms of a stage play makes a lot of sense. It, you don't want to have more people than the reader can easily keep track of. Yeah, I, I, it's one of those things. Um, I, it wasn't one of this isn't quite the right place to say, but I do recommend just reading and reading and reading short stories so you can get a feel for the rhythm and the um, the shape of what a short story is regardless of length, whether it's a short, short story or, or a long, short story. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's one of those things that you, some short stories will work great with just a single character and it'll be 12,000 words long and you can have a short, short story of 600 words with five characters and two plot lines. Just as a rule of thumb, I wouldn't go into um, subplots. I would just have, like, one strong story idea that the characters are facing how many characters you want there to be. You could say five, but it completely okay. depends on what it is. My one of my early short stories was really short. So there's only there's only the one character. The character is talking to the reader. So that I didn't have to uh, add words because the reader should be answering the questions that the character is asking you through the story. So it allowed me to to half the narrative. But everybody's going to read a different story. So you can literally have a story with just one character. But it, I would hate to say put a limit on it, but that would be just my general thing. No more than four or five characters, one plot line. But don't hold me to it. <laughs> well, the next question is actually a two-parter. They're kind of similar. Is there a particular short story that you would recommend? And what is the best and most delicious short story you've ever read? My personal favorite short story of all time is James Thurber's The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Uh, it just speaks to me on a deep, deep level. But beyond that, there, there's a ton of great short stories out there, and there's a ton of great writers working right now. If you haven't read Art Taylor's short stories, uh, for example, uh, you're missing out. Um, I would say Jeffrey Deaver's Twisted collection. They're, they're all stories that end on a twist, whether they're a big capital T or a small one. But I would definitely recommend reading that. Or um, um, I'm just trying to think what I've got. There's David Morrell had um, a really good and solid his personal short story collection. It's got some real... Um, great stories in that um he's got a story that's like iris for orange blue is for insanity which is a fantastic story that kind of plays off of a, a modern day van gogh there i would say uh what i've been doing i've been reading a lot of the um the magazines like the ellery queen and the alfred hitchcock that kind of showcase what is considered um some of the 
the best writing. I enjoy reading anthologies. And I also enjoy reading like those yearly best of collections, um, just because those are great examples of what, um, you know, is considered the standard or, 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 or like an excellent example of the standard. And so that, you know, reading those stories uh, might be a great idea for um, helping aspiring writers to kind of understand, um, you know, kind of like what Simon was saying, what is a, a successful short story I sound like at this length and this like how many characters am I seeing? How many subplots am I seeing? How does the author effectively weave, you know, storylines together with this amount of, uh, you know, with this kind of economy? So um, just looking at those kinds of collections uh, are, it has been very helpful for me. I'd say, if I could, the, oh, go ahead. No, please, I'll I was do it. say any of the Bashakon collections, um, I think are, are good examples in addition to um, the magazines, Ms. Uh, Albert Hitchcock and uh, no, Jake Brown. Um, we should. Oh, I had, oh, Rock in the Fireplace just put out a yeah. anthology called uh, 1%, The 1%. And it all the stories are themed w about like the ultra rich, and I love that anthology. And it's got a lot of the table of contents includes a lot of um, some of the best short story writers working today. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. And I'm also just if I could just jump on the point about Hitchcock and Queen, Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine, Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine undoubtedly the top markets in our field for writers. And I'm, I, this is just kind of a public service announcement. If you're at all interested in short mystery fiction, subscribe. Uh, because like, like every magazine in the world, they're having trouble, you know, readers are bleeding away. And every subscription is a vote for the future of these great markets that you can eventually publish in. 100% agree. <laughs> that kind of goes along with a question that came in about uh, recommendations for magazines that publish short mystery stories other than Hitchcock and Ellery Queen. But I think, Joseph, you mentioned your website would have a good listing of those different uh, venues. Yep. Uh, for those of you that do write novels, do you find that your short stories are a different subgenre or genre than your long fiction? Or are you pretty much consistent throughout? My novels are mysteries. I like writing mysteries, um, like traditional mysteries. And my short stories are usually a lot darker, a lot grittier, and also um, the crime stories. So there's not necessarily a mystery. It's, it's more a, a description or a narrative about a crime happening. Um, so yeah, that that's would be my difference. Um, I don't think there's a difference between mine. I think there's, I think there's a, oh, I feel like a wider variety of short stories because I, you know, I can write those quicker than I can write novels. Um, so I think they're in the same ballpark per se. Um, it's just that sometimes I can get more experimental with a short story. I can do yep. something in second person um, that I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be able to carry off uh, a novel completely in second person. But I've done that with a short story. You know, you can get to play and and tear up the medium a bit with a short story. Yeah, one thing I learned from you, Simon, is um, through one of your courses was just experimenting with structure um, and, you know, telling a story through like a unique lens, like, um, you know, like a, like a story in letters or like a story that's I, I just spitballing off of my head, like a journal entry or something like that. Like it just, clean around with structure and you're right like you can't really do that with novels they're a pretty straightforward um medium and so um i have written a novel it is very much like my short stories um uh, the same characters um and the same similar themes but again um i do get to play around a little bit more with like structure and point of view and um with in the short stories, um, then I would do. It. I, I think one one of my favorite favorite short stories was was from a few years ago, and it's told through shopping receipts. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, was that, that was there was the example I used in the class with with Ashley and uh, Jennifer was um, it's 
you can tell it's a, it's a it's a love story gone bad. So it's the receipts start off with like flower, champagne, whatever, and it leads to an engagement ring. And then the last receipt is duct tape, plastic, shovel. <laughs> and, and so it's you can, you see everything. So the, the short story is only about 150 words because it's, it's something like a, a dozen um, purchase receipts. But it was, it was a very novel, very effective way of um, telling a story differently. Uh, the, we had a question here about uh, what it was very short stories of 100 words. I think we've answered that our anthology will be between 1,500 and 5,000 words. I think that's correct. So, um, do you have recommendations for magazines that publish? Oh, I already went through that one. Sorry about that. How much does the editorial process vary in short stories for magazines like Ellery Queen versus those for anthologies? Is there a difference between the two markets? In my experience, in my experience, this is purely my experience. Magazines do very little editing. Anthology editors uh, do more. But like, that's just been my experience. It probably does vary pretty widely. I would second that. I don't know because I've never been in. I've never submitted to Ellery Queen or um, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I need to. But <laughs> that was nice. I, I um, had one story, Ellery Queen, and another one that was accepted, but hasn't been out yet, um, hasn't been put out yet. Um, my experience has, they never got back to me with edits for the first one at all. Um, you know, but yeah, all of my, um, you know, experience with editors giving suggestions or cleaning up a little bit has been, have been with, um, anthologies or other magazines. It may, it may arise in fact, from the fact that, uh, in part from the fact that an anthology is, a you know, it's guided by a single editorial vision towards a specific goal, whereas Ellery Queen is, you know, there's going to be a PI story and then a cozy story and then a historical. I mean, there's no unifying vision for that issue that they're trying to steer you towards. The last couple of questions were about the specifics of the anthology. I think that's we've covered those since these comments came in. So unless I'm missing another question, I think that was pretty much it. Do you see something, Jennifer, that I'm missing? Um, I think Penny just, she wanted um, to ask Simon in particular if he planned to offer his short story writing course anytime soon. Um, I think, hold on one sec. I am teaching it for guppies um, in March. Thank you. And there is a link on my website. There's another time during the year that I am teaching it. And that's open to the public and not just a guppies thing. Um, but that's on my website on, at uh, simonwood.net. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, I, I take a lot of guppy classes. I, I took a lot of guppy classes, including several of yours. And I love it. So if you're a member of um, Sisters in Crime, you could be a member of guppies. And they have a lot of great online classes. That you can do at your own pace, which that's what's really good for me. Oh, sorry. Uh, the short story guppies is April. I'm just looking at my calendar. It's April. Great. Um, and yeah, we'll have more information, more specifics about guidelines for the anthology um, coming up on our website um, soon. So keep checking our website. Well, uh, we cannot thank the four of you enough for a fantastic panel. Uh, it's a great conversation and I know I learned a ton, and I'm sure everyone else did too. We really appreciate all your your insights on every aspect of short story writing and editing and and getting your work out there. So um, again, thank you all so so much.